Burnett and Friends, starring Carol Burnett with Harvey Corbin, Vicki Lawrence, and Tim Conway. want to say before we get started? Yes. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, I was there last year. You were? Yes. <laughs> well, where were you? <laughs> we, Rock Hudson and I were there. We did I Do, I Do at the big, yes, at the Muni. Oh, no. I saw those. <laughs> I saw those two empty seats and those were the ones you should have been in. <laughs> Well, you have no right to go on vacation that we're coming to say, I came all the way there, and you came out. Thank you very much. Boy, is it hot there. She's a, it was 105 degrees on stage every night that we were working. Yeah, humidity was 85. We were absolutely drenched, and then to top it off, you open your mouth to sing, and a moth flies in. It's Hey, we got a big show for you tonight, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Where the hell you been? Don't start up, Mama. It was late getting home from the store. Yeah, mostly because I had to find this blender for you that you had to have in two seconds flat. Well, don't just stand there. Put it in the kitchen. We're gonna miss the beginning of the movie. Look! A whole display case fell over while I was trying to fish this thing out for you. What was I supposed to do? Leave all those little ball bearings and sockets and, and, and washers lying on the floor just so you could see the beginning of the movie? <laughs> Boy, howdy. If it was a Clint Eastwood movie, it'd be a different story, wouldn't it, huh? You'd have been out there all night in your sleeping bag just so you could be first in line this morning. But because it's a musical that Eunice wants to see, you can't tear yourself away from that dumb store of yours. <laughs> Who's taking care of the boys? A babysitter, of course. She reliable? No, Mama, she's on probation from the penitentiary. <laughs> well, I don't want to go at all. It can't be with a light heart. Well, just lighten up your heart, Mama, because we're taking you to the movies, seeing as how you nagged us into it. And couldn't you have talked Tim into wearing a tie? I swear, the last time I seen him in a tie was the day you two got married, and I think he borrowed that one and gave it back right after the ceremony. <laughs> well, now, just who do you think's gonna be looking at us in that dark movie house? This movie house happens to be in my neighborhood, Missy, and I'd like to be able to hold my head up going in and out. What the hell's he done in there now? <laughs> I will never figure out why you ever married that man anyway. sucker for them knock-knock jokes. <laughs> and you tell them so cute, too. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, no, it's all right. I can laugh as loud as I want to. <laughs> Mom and Daddy ain't home. They're over at my Aunt Eloise's for the whole weekend. <laughs> but good night. <laughs> I had a lovely time. Can't I just come in for a minute tonight? You... Why, Ann, how would that look? Well... <laughs> Who's looking? <laughs> now, I just mentioned it in passing. I didn't want to put any crazy ideas into that crazy head of yours. You don't have to worry about putting any in there. <laughs> I got enough in there all by myself. <laughs> well, okay, sit down and I'll get us a couple of cokes. Okay. We got plenty of cokes. Fine, use that and hit the spot. Boy, would Mama have a fit if she knew that I was out this late. <laughs> Didn't you just love that movie? Oh, well, I like, well, I like westerns better than musicals. Oh, well, I can understand that. In fact, I respect you for it. <laughs> musicals ain't very viral. Ain't you just crazy about that June Haver? Oh, I can 
take her or leave her. Oh, she's one of my all-time favorites. Of course, you know who my all-time, all-time favorite is? Betty Grable. <gasps> if you're a romantic chum, pack up your duds and come to Acapulco. <laughs> da 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 Acapulco. Take it up! Take it up! <laughs> Now you just get your mind on the right track this minute. <laughs> you know, every so often I just say the silliest things to myself. I say, Eunice, you should have kept up with your tap dancing lessons. You could have been a big movie star. I never knew you took tap lessons. Oh, yeah. Well, I only took two. <laughs> you can't believe how uppity that teacher was. Everything had to be her way. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. Your legs are as good as Betty Grable's any day. Stop. I won't stop, doggone it, because it's true. Stop it. I'm going to go further. They're better. <laughs> oh, you, know, you know something? You are something else. I mean, you're not like the rest of the girls in this town. I mean, you know, some of them fluffy headed blondes around here, you know, they'll actually look down on me because I work in a hardware store. No. Yeah, they do. Where would they be without hardware? Now, supposing you took all the hardware out of this house right now, where do you think you and I would be? Oh, stop it, stop it. I don't want to hear any more about it. <laughs> oh, Ed, hardware is important to the whole world. <laughs> oh, Eunice, you are something else. What are you doing? Well, I ain't playing tic-tac-toe. <laughs> Eunice, I'm just trying to kiss you. Why? <laughs> Well, why, why, why does the water go over uh, Niagara Falls? It's the call of nature, that's why. Oh, but, but is it me or, or my body? <laughs> well, a little bit of both, I guess. Well, I just want to make something perfectly clear, Ed Higgins. I mean, you can take a girl out and buy a real nice Chinese dinner for $2 and everything, but you don't own her body and soul. I want you to know that I am not that kind of a girl. I know you ain't that kind of girl, Eunice. Well, good. So then why don't we just get back now to our spiritual carefree footing? Well, we've been spiritual for two months and a half. I mean, what do you think I am? Some sort of a love and leave and playboy? Oh, no, I don't. I think you're wonderful. I really do. Honest. And it's so good to have somebody to talk to. Boy, every time I mention any little dream of mine, my mama just sneers at me. Daddy just ignores me altogether. Now, folks don't believe me either. You know what my daddy calls me? Lunkhead. No. I resent it. I don't mind telling you. Well, a good woman would never, never, ever call her man Lunkhead. Oh, you oh stop. You <laughs> You, uh, you uh, uh, yes, Mama, it's me. I'm, I'm in the living room with a friend. What are you doing home? Never mind what I'm doing home. What are you doing in the living room at this hour? Causing all that racket. You just getting in, you're popping out, and word sick. Oh, Mama, calm down. Well, you will. That, that stupid Marybeth Pickens, I'm going to come in here right now and kick her out of this house once and for all. Well, i got to be tired than you. No, Mama, it ain't Marybeth. It's a boyfriend whom you do not know. <laughs> is this clown that you have dragged in here off of the streets? Mama, this is Ed Higgins. You know, the young man I have been telling you about now for quite some time. We finally get the unveiling, huh? No wonder you've been keeping him under wraps. What have you been doing with my little girl? Nothing, ma'am. Nothing. I Carl, get on out of here. Carl, do you hear me? Yes, damn it, the whole neighborhood can hear you. <laughs> Skedaddle along now. 
I, I don't know how I let so much time go by as it is. I guess you were probably concentrating on other things. No, ma'am. Mama, you just stop that. Ed is a wonderful man. What kind of wonderful man creeps into a young girl's home at this hour and starts fooling around right outside her mom and daddy's bedroom door? Carl, am I going to have to come in there and light fire under you? Did I ever have a minute of privacy? You think a man could have some peace and privacy in the middle of the night without being nasty? Oh, do you have to pick this very second to drive me out of my mind. There is an emergency going on now. <laughs> be a much better idea if I saw you later anyway, Eunice. How about Sunday morning? I'll uh, pick you up about 10 and we'll go out to Brush Creek for that you picnic. you think you're taking my little girl out to Brush Creek, you got another thing coming. I know all about what goes on out at Brush Creek. Don't you pay any attention to her. She goes off a rocker every now and then. Don't you ever dare come in this house again. Well, maybe, well, maybe I'll just meet you out there, Eunice. Nice meeting you, Mrs. Harper. Tell Mr. Harper I'm sorry I'm... <laughs> I will never forgive you for this as long as I live. He was about to propose to me. Well, then he's even dumber than he looks. <laughs> so he may not be smart, and he may not have a great personality, and he may not even be particularly attractive, but he respects me, and he's the first person in this whole wide world that ever has, and I am drunk with it. And if you think you're going to drive him out of my life, you got another thing coming. If I have to marry Ed Higgins by hook or by crook, you're gonna marry that big dumb cluck over my dead body? I hope so. <laughs> you clumsy ox. He knocked over the darn trash can. All right, Mama. You wanted to know why we got married? Okay, I'll tell you why we got married. Tell Mama why we got married, Ed. Hmm? Tell her! Because we were in love? What the hell are you talking about? Tell her the real reason. Well, I got that blender all assembled. Let's get going to that oh, movie. Oh, no, you don't. I want to satisfy my mama's curiosity. Just tell her what happened that night. She drove me out of my own home and into your arms. You told me you'd kill me if I ever told your mother. Take it back. It is time we satisfied her curiosity. Go on. Go on. Just tell her what happened that night that I went with you. And then later on, we had to get married. I'll get you drift, Eunice. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll just get going to the movies. Maybe if we hurry up, we could stop in town for a six-pack of beer on the way. That hit the spot. You got any money on you? Am I going to pay for my own ticket again? You two want to 